In recent decades, millions of people have drifted away from Jesus and their Catholic faith. Sadly, many may never find their way back. I'm Tom Peterson, and I believe that God has called me to use my background in media to be a catalyst in the new evangelization. Our organization produces inspiring and creative evangelization messages that have helped lead hundreds of thousands of inactive Catholics, converts, agnostics, and atheists home to Jesus and His Holy Church. Join us as we travel across North America to bring you stories of heartbreak, redemption, and transformation as the Holy Spirit leads His people home. God has an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. He wants us to spend eternity in heaven with Him and bring as many people with us as possible. This is Catholics Come Home. Welcome to Catholics Come Home. Today we're coming to you from Denver, Colorado, where we'll meet an urban professional who left the church in her early 20s. In her youth, she experienced a family tragedy, leaving her bitter and in need of healing. But years later, she attended a funeral and there felt Christ's healing embrace and that warm and welcoming invitation home to the Catholic Church. Like everybody else in this series, today's guest came home to the church thanks to Catholics Come Home and responding to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to meet Devin Jones. Devin, thanks so much for being with us today, and welcome home. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Devin, start by telling us about your faith and family background. I'm the oldest of seven kids. We were raised Catholic. We went to Catholic school, which was the best experience ever. And I, you know, was very faithful. I wanted to be a nun when I was a kid. You know, my favorite thing was to read the lives of the saints. And when I started getting older, you know, things started to change a little bit. And I think going to Catholic school was kind of such a saving grace for us because we could go to school every day and have people who really loved and cared about us. And also great families around. Some of the best childhood memories are with other people's families and uh, going to mass with other people's family. Things started to change for the worse. Tell us about that. Well, my parents got divorced and my mother remarried. My mother was already very verbally and physically abusive. And then she married my stepdad, which was kind of a perfect storm for really chaotic. And being married to my stepfather, he was very abusive with me and my sister and um, physically abusive, sexually abusive. and. My mother really didn't seem to care, and she pretty much just let my stepdad do whatever he wanted to as kids. And it seems like at that point that it wasn't so known about children who are being abused. So going to Catholic school at St. Mary's, it was the most safe place for us to go to every day. So how did you feel when you went home? We were terrified. Um, you never knew what was going to happen. You never knew if you could just have a safe night with brothers and sisters making dinner or if they were going to come home and abuse us. Um, they really kept us away from our grandparents at that point, too, which my grandparents are really nice Christian family. And um, they isolated us. And they were just scared that we were going to tell people about what we were enduring. So it was a lot of trauma. How did those things affect you psychologically and how did it change your spirituality? I think it affected me psychologically because I was just always scared. I was scared to talk to people. I was scared to be myself. Um, my spiritual life when I was a child was a lot stronger because of what I was enduring. I was very, very religious because the nuns at the Catholic school were so good to me. My friends' families were so good to me. So it was definitely a safe haven, and it really enforced my spirituality. Why did you stop going to Mass? 
I was in my early 20s and I had um, moved to Los Angeles and I was around a lot of creative types where maybe mass wasn't important enough anymore for me to be committed to. And as soon as the scandals hit with the church, I felt very betrayed. I really projected a lot of anger and emotions that were maybe misplaced on the Catholic Church dealing with the trauma of my childhood. How did your, um, your thoughts on the church scandals keep you away from going to Mass? I think that in my childhood, the Catholic faith and Mass was so important to my well-being because it was such a safe place to go and I felt so much love there that when the scandal came out about the priest being doing basically the same thing that my family had done, it was very difficult for me to reconcile the two. I felt that everybody should have that experience of safety in the Catholic Church that I experienced. And then here was stories coming out that people were actually harmed the same way I was harmed in a place that I deemed so safe. What other churches did you attend when you left the Catholic faith? I went to Methodist, Presbyterian, Protestant, Lutheran, Unitarian, but it was something was always missing. I uh, would go to church and I would leave church not feeling like I had gone to church, if that makes any sense. When you were going to non-Catholic churches, what was missing? Actual rituals, I think the ceremony, the sacraments, I was really surprised that at a lot of churches that the sacrament of the Eucharist is completely absent. It just seems like such an important part of being a Christian. Coming up, find out what happened next in Devon's journey of healing and faith. And I went to confession, which was really big. I hadn't been to confession in years, and that stirred up a lot of emotions and it really got me um, considering my Catholic faith. It was the night of the Last Supper. Jesus knew the time had come for him to leave the world, yet he wanted to remain with us just as personally as if he had never left. How did he accomplish this? By instituting the priesthood. From generation to generation, he would handpick men to minister in his person. St. John Vianney said, if we were to fully realize what a priest is on earth, we would die, not of fright, but of love. Is this really how we view our priests? Even though priests are human and imperfect, they bring us the sacraments, including the forgiveness of sins. It is through the office of the priesthood that Christ accomplishes his saving work. How can we not then pray for our priests, affirm them and lift them up? St. Vianney said, what use would be a house filled with gold were there no one to open its door? The priest holds the key to the treasures of heaven. It is he who opens the door. My family left the church because of a, a, a very negative experience with a specific priest. And that took my whole family away from going to church for a long period of time. And there were other Catholic churches and there were great Catholic churches and great priests, but we stopped because of that one specific instance. And in a way, I was, I was cheated out a big part of my journey and my life uh, because we weren't in the church. In life, it seems like we're always enslaved to something. And I think that's, that's basically where our, what our culture is all about right now, is we are, we are enslaved to power or to greed or to wealth or to lust. But there's a true freedom to not be enslaved, but to attach ourselves to God and to be free. My involvement in the church, my relationship with God is who I am. It, it's what gives me my identity. Thank God I'm home. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for whatever reason, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Each day, the world is blessed by the heroic dedication of holy Catholic priests serving in our parishes and religious orders, in nursing homes and hospitals, and as military chaplains around the world. Since the secular culture is often quick to criticize Catholic priests, it's so important for us to offer our prayers and gratitude for the countless holy Catholic priests who serve humanity with courageous virtue and dedication to Jesus and the gospel. 
EncouragePriest.org was launched by the Catholic media apostolate CatholicsComeHome.org during the year for priests to support our priests and promote vocations. By visiting EncouragePriest.org, you'll be able to help the priests in your life through spiritual bouquets, written or video greetings, and collar holler e-cards. Let's pray daily for our seminarians, priests, bishops, and our Holy Father who bring us the sacraments and help guide our path to heaven. Thank you for joining us in this apostolic mission of EncouragePriest.org and CatholicsComeHome.org. How did Catholics Come Home help you? Catholics Come Home helped me come back to the church because the commercials were playing very heavily on television in Phoenix at the time. What stirred inside of you when you saw the Catholics Come Home campaign? It seemed so welcoming and so kind and a kindness that I kind of thought was absent of the Catholic faith for a while. And then I went to a friend's grandmother who had a huge influence on my Catholic faith's funeral in Phoenix and there were banners up everywhere and it had actually been the first time I had attended Mass in years. And just being with that family again and celebrating Mass and being in a Catholic situation, it just gave me a lot of love and a lot of encouragement to come back to Mass. Tell me about the experience you had talking to one of your clients at the car dealership that helped connect us in the first place. I have a client who bought a car from my dealership, so I was giving her a tutorial on all the technical aspects of her vehicle, and I was setting her radio stations, and I always you know, I like to see if they want me to put Catholic radio on. And she was very excited that I was Catholic as well. And she invited me to a celebration with her. And you were speaking and you were telling the wonderful story about Catholics Come Home. And I think I raised my hand and said that that's how I started coming back to church again. What was the process of coming home? Well, I worked with a priest at a parish and I did some, you know, uh, intro catechism classes again and I went to confession, which was really big. I hadn't been to confession in years and that stirred up a lot of emotions and it really got me um, considering my Catholic faith again. And then I came back to Mass and participated in the sacrament of the Eucharist. What did you learn after going to confession? It stirred up beautiful memories. It stirred up childhood memories of being an altar girl, of wonderful nuns who were so kind to me when I was a child, uh, celebrating the mass, holidays during the feasts. It was really welcoming. Soon we'll learn where Devon's life has taken her now. So returning to my faith was so pivotal in my life as I've always seen it, a much happier person. Today's episode is talking about fortitude, about not giving up. In chapter seven of the book, Catholics Come Home, Home for Good is the chapter, and we talk about not giving up in so many ways, not giving up against the church when maybe somebody has upset you, be it a priest or a fellow parishioner in the church, not giving up on the effort to evangelize, and it reminds me of a story that we have in the book uh, in chapter seven uh, with a prospector. When I lived in Arizona, there was a series of mountains on the east side of town called the Superstitions. That's where the gold and silver prospectors dug for gold and mined for, for the riches. And the story goes that the first prospector who started out found a nugget of gold. It was about the size of a quarter and he was so excited that he had found something good. But after about two or three more weeks of trying, he didn't find much more. So out of frustration and out of uh, lack of patience, he gave up. But the story goes on to show how the next dusty prospector who came along found the largest gold strike in Arizona history, not one foot from where the first prospector left off. This teaches us a lesson, not only in our faith journey, but in our evangelization efforts. We must never give up on God. We must never give up on being fed by the church. And we need to keep our eyes focused on the goal. Let's not be like that first prospector where we give up when things aren't going our way or we don't get what we want fast enough. 
Let's keep our eyes focused on heaven, our evangelization efforts and fortitude consistent, and let's never give up on helping to love souls home to heaven. Our family had been going through crisis. Little by little, we just found ourselves drifting completely away. I was afraid to go back. I mean, I cried the first time I received the sacraments again. Cried because I was back and because I had allowed God to become a part of me again. It's united our family. There's peace in our home that we didn't have before. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for any reason, visit catholicscomehome.org today. There's a way of life where simplicity brings joy and humility leads to happiness, where we learn that less is more and in giving we receive. It's our refuge from chaos and light to guide us through darkness. It's a place where the broken receive healing and repentant hearts find mercy. Here, our days are set free from anxiety and addictions and our nights rest with more peace. So where is this hope and who knows the way? Our hope rests in Jesus and his church leads the way. If you're longing to fill an emptiness or seeking a way home, we invite you to experience the peace that only comes from God. We are Catholic. Welcome home. When I was outside of the church, there was always an unsettled feeling. There was always a feeling of something missing and something not complete. The, the deal clincher is we found our way to our, our parish and we met just an incredible pastor. We learned things that we'd never been taught. Wouldn't be the person that I am without the church and without the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist. I can't live without it. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, visit catholicscomehome.org. Most of us can recall a childhood memory of innocence and a peace that only comes from God. Yet with our busy schedules today, many families don't attend church weekly or spend much time teaching their children about God. So many families now are burdened by financial and family challenges, substance abuse, and other worries. But there is hope. Studies show that people who pray regularly and practice their Christian faith are less stressed, financially stable, more compassionate, optimistic, healthier, and happier. Experience a positive difference in your life and for your family by coming home to your parish. Learn more by visiting catholicscomehome.org today. Here you may find answers to your questions and discover how Jesus and the sacraments will bless your family. There's no pressure or risk. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. What did you discover after seeing the Catholics Come Home campaign and then answering the Holy Spirit's call? After seeing the campaign and deciding to return to the church, I've let go of any kind of anger, sadness. I've really started the healing process and a big thing is forgiveness. So I've forgiven past sins against me and I decided that the scandals shouldn't keep me away from my faith and the church, that most priests and most people within the church are amazing, wonderful people. And just because there's some bad people out there, that that can't affect my whole relationship with my faith. And I really missed the sacraments. I really missed the Eucharist and going to confession. So returning to my faith was so pivotal in my life as I've always seen it, a much happier person. How's your life now? I have the best life, I'm so happy. I have an amazing job at a car dealership where I get to interact with a lot of different people, a lot of diversity. I have great fellow coworkers. I love to cook, I love to work out and yoga. I live in one of the prettiest cities in the country, Denver. There's um, a lot of eclectic activities to do here. I frequent museums and galleries, and I love going out to great restaurants, and I have a really great life. What other fruit has come into your life after coming home to the church? I attend the Cathedral Parish, 
and I've helped my sister return to Mass. We have a great relationship. I also have a niece and she comes with me to Mass. I tell her that we're gonna go see baby Jesus. She loves it. She loves lighting the candles to pray for my Nana. Devin, what other volunteer activities have you gotten involved with? I volunteer with underprivileged children, so every year I work the toy drive. I also do a lot of literacy training with teaching kids how to read. I go to my sister's third grade school and I teach kids how to read there. So how has your Catholic family helped change you for the better? I think it made me a lot happier and it made me a lot kinder to people. I think I had a lot more patience with people and I just want to live how Jesus would have us live and just try to be good to everyone. What's on your heart that you would want to share with people? I really think that the Catholics Come Home campaign is instrumental in finding peace because it's just that easy to come home. Just come home. Just come through the door and come home. And once you do, it feels so welcoming. So yeah, just come back. Devin, thanks for joining us today and we're so glad you're back in the Catholic family. It's been all over the news in the past decade. Today's viewer question will help us better address scandal in the church. How do I respond to someone who brings up their frustration about the priest scandals or says that they have left the church because of it? This question requires both sensitivity and frankness. Here's how you can respond. First, express understanding. It is true that for many years, Many bishops failed as shepherds in responding to the problem appropriately. Express your agreement that no matter what, abuse of any kind is deplorable and unacceptable for people in authority, especially men who are supposed to represent Christ. Second, clear up misconceptions. The reality is that less than 4% of priests were actually involved in sexual misconduct decades ago, and there has been much done to remedy the problem since then. While any abuse is certainly deplorable, other educational and religious institutions in our sin-plagued culture have suffered even higher rates of abuse than the church. Which leads us to point number three, demonstrate the church's response. The Catholic Church has recognized the gravity and extent of the crisis and put into practice vital reforms to make the church a very safe place and help ensure that such abuse doesn't happen again. Popes, cardinals, and bishops have made genuine, heartfelt apologies. Church leaders have taken actions, like implementing safe environment training in dioceses and parishes all around the country, establishing diocesan codes of conduct, adhering to a zero-tolerance policy for abusers, increasing scrutiny of candidates for the priesthood, and offering special masses for victims of past abuse. The Catholic Church is now a model for other institutions in this regard, with many organizations emulating the reforms that the Catholic Church has put in place. Next, put the situation in perspective. If we read the Bible, we see that some of God's chosen people betrayed him, even one of his own apostles, Judas, betrayed him. We should be thankful that the actions of Judas didn't destroy the good that the other 11 apostles and scores of disciples were doing in the early church. The vast majority of priests today serve the church with honor and are heroic in their faith. Finally, offer your prayers and extend an invite home. Sometimes that's really all they're waiting for. Remember also to pray for our priests and bishops. Visit our Catholics Come Home site called encouragepriest.org to learn more. Also visit catholicscomehome.org for more help responding to the priesthood scandal. Here's your chance to get active in the new evangelization. Visit the catholicscomehome.org website, enter through the door, and click on the Shop tab. Here, you can order a Catholics Come Home book, evangelization cards, a DVD of the Evangemercials, or a car magnet. If you or someone you know has come home to the church thanks in part to Catholics Come Home, let us know. Or if you have a comment, question, or want to support our mission, email us at info at catholicscomehome.org or write to us at Catholics Come Home, 
P.O. Box 1802, Roswell, Georgia, 30077. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Over the years, we begin to realize how quickly life goes by. For some of us, our journey will end without notice. And when our transition into eternity begins, there won't be a chance for any do-overs, no time to rewind our life, no chance to choose a different ending. For the movie of our life can be used to judge us. We will sorrowfully relive the bad times and joyfully revisit the good. It is then we will fully realize how our unkind thoughts and selfish choices wounded others and led us away from God, our loving Father. You people are lazy. <laughs> and each time we ignored God's voice, I think she's pregnant by somebody else. Our conscience grew more deaf and our heart hardened. Thankfully, you still can ask God to help edit your life story and create the ideal ending. No matter what you've done, there is good news. Since Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to save it. Jesus can heal your memories and forgive your past if you accept his mercy. You really can be freed from the addiction of sin and find lasting peace. Imagine hearing God say after your life's movie, well done, good and faithful servant. It all starts by asking Jesus to help you now. If you've been waiting for a sign, this is your chance to begin an adventure with God that will last forever. Learn more at catholicscomehome.org. Trust in Jesus and find hope, forgiveness, and a more abundant and everlasting life. Visit catholicscomehome.org. For 2,000 years, our family has celebrated life and prayed for our world. We cared for the poor, started hospitals, blessed marriages, and educated generations of children. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, in the church started by Jesus. If you've been away, come home to your parish and visit catholicscomehome.org today. Devin was haunted by family trauma and was painfully reminded of this during the time of the priest scandal in the church. But Devin's heart was open to her Catholic faith and the Holy Spirit led her home to the Catholic Church and the sacraments. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Catholics Come Home. Please keep Devin and all of us at Catholics Come Home in your prayers. Remember to fulfill your role in the new evangelization by helping to love somebody to heaven. <laughs>